Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the conference. Uh, this is really weird talking to yourself, but I suppose we all have to get used to it. I'm just changing screens. Hopefully you can now all see this. Um, this is just me saying hello. The symbol comes from the uh, type archive and it's the one of DNA D pencil. Just so you know who I am. I've been around a while. I'm a professor at Middlesex University and one uh, two days a week and I run a design company four days a week. This is a picture of me uh, when I was five years old and the street photographer gave my mum um, a photograph of me holding these two live monkeys and a live parrot. And it's the only photograph I think she ever bought. I love animals. I still love animals, but I now go around the world and I eat them, which is a lot more fun. Last year, I uh, talked at the largest design conference in China, um, at ADM, which is me on stage with showing the Pearson logo. I've done about 130 brands, some very large, quite small ones. This is an article, um, in a Hong Kong design magazine. It's my favorite article because I haven't got a clue what it says. This is on stage. One of the biggest jobs I've ever done was I redesigned Visa worldwide. I redrew the V, I, and the A, and a designer called Viv Thomas. He drew the S. I'm crap at curves, but I'm getting better. And at the same time as we did Visa, we realigned um, all their other brands, and this is Plus that one I had to photograph in Cambodia. Um, the, world, the world of branding, is which why I want to talk about today, is changing. And it basically seems to be lots of things are getting slightly blander. Like all the, all the fashion logos are merging from being unique type styles to similar type styles. So the whole thing is this whole thing what I do mostly is develop brands. And everyone seems to be moving to sans serif typefaces. And this is again, this whole thing is all over the media about everything becoming the same. Uh, and it made me query a bit like, um, God, am I getting bored of Helveticas? Um, and also, I don't, even I don't think I could sell a new logo by actually saying it is actually, the word mark is naturally Redubo with a capital U. Um, I'm a man that likes ideas. I can sell ideas because I actually believe clients want to communicate the essence of who they are. And again, this is just showing a selection of some quite well-known brands. When I go pitch for a job or I turn up to do a credentials, this is the first slide I show. It's mainly because I don't want to produce boring design work and I certainly don't want a boring design client. We're now living in, in the age of AI. Um, so the world's completely changing. You can now design nine layouts, feed into the AI all the different um, criteria, and the, all the photographs, all the text, everything else, and it will typeset the whole thing and lay it all out. So as designers and as design educators, we've got to start looking at ways of making students produce non-boring work. They've got to stop becoming what I call Mac monkeys. We seem to produce a rather large amount of these. They know how to work all the programs, so they don't actually know how to design properly. They don't know how to think properly. Um, a few years ago in 2014, I was asked to write a book uh, called What They Didn't Teach You in Design School. Um, it's sold out five times now in English and in American. It's in Spanish, um, Korean, Russian, and in Chinese, it became a big seller. Um, and it's basically a pun on Did You Know? And the publishers after us, it won an award for its typography. So on the fifth printing, the publishers decided they'd hire some typographer to design the cover. Um, which I can't do anything about, but I can comment on it because design 
you can't design a solution to a piece of communication and not define what you want to communicate. And that, this is what I think they communicated in the style of that book. Um, interestingly, since they've thrown the cover away, I think I'm, I'm going to use it because I've been commissioned uh, to write a book for the Chinese market on how to build a brand identity system. The basic idea of this book is a step-by-step -step approach of how to build a brand. And it takes the whole myth and mystery out of the branding processes and produces it with a great deal of common sense. So set, basically the principle is how do you get clients and how do you get designers, who I think this is relevant for education, to actually come up with concepts and explain things. So their brand actually says something. So it's about benchmark. So you get a six set of six to eight words, which encapsulates what the bench, what that client is wanting to communicate. It's a level of quality, you know, a standard by which you can compare what I design or anyone designs against what someone's trying to communicate. And once you have your benchmarks, you can stand out. You know, do you stand out by standing up with them? Is, it, is the this benchmarks and the design should ignite these words into life? It's not a strategy. The strategy is actually the benchmarks. The branding process follows eight simple stage approach. You, you have to know what you're designing. If you're designing for a bank in Vietnam, which we're doing at present, you have to actually go to Vietnam. You've got to understand the culture. You've got to understand how that organization works, what's different about it, what makes it Vietnamese. And through all the research and familiarization, you can break down the visual information you're seeing and the cultural information, write a design brief, and try to get the client to agree to a set of benchmarks. From the benchmark, you then produce initial concepts. So now the client and I have both got a set of words which the design's got to answer. So if we, look, we may look at something non-verbal, if it doesn't answer or tick most of the benchmarks, then it doesn't really work. After initial concepts, you do the development, the design development, the artwork, guidelines for implementation, communication of change. The world nowadays has gone from a simple typeface, couple of symbols and uh, corporate colours. It now has to work on a phone, on a smartphone with it, and it has to work in a lot of different media. The touch points have grown vastly. But it doesn't matter how, what the touch points are, it actually is, does it answer the brief and has it got all the building blocks? So you've got to have your benchmarks, your logo, your corporate colours, your brand typeface, your visual language, a, a whole language backing the brand, not just a piece of Helvetica type. Um, a tone of voice, a graphic format, and we're now developing brand smell and brand sound, because both of which are nearly stronger than visual. They're not words, the benchmarks are not words which describe the way you do business. They're more like emotional, emotive words. I mean, in, in the late 80s, people used to come up to me after they'd known and done visa and show me their business card and say, what do you think to my logo? And I used to turn it upside down on my hand and then say to them, please now describe what your business does and how does it do it? And then we would turn over the business card and then look at what they actually had as a symbol. Benchmarks is that way of doing things. So... It's about communication and what you're trying to communicate. It gives a client a way of articulating in the visual world. And some, on the whole, a lot of things like bankers don't know how to communicate the visual world. It, if you were hiring an architect to design your head office, you could give them the benchmarks. If you're hiring a PR company, you give them the benchmarks. If you're hiring an advertising agency, who hate following any rules, you give them a set of benchmarks, and if the work doesn't answer the benchmarks, that's, that means it doesn't work. I mean, benchmarks play important roles. I mean, as the legend has it, when Phil Knight, who runs Nike, first saw the swatch, his comment was, well, I don't love it, but maybe it'll grow on me. 
but I bet you it actually answered one of the benchmark qualities. Like the Apple symbol, although they had to get permission from uh, the Beatles for, for their Apple symbol to be able to use on any musical stuff, the reason the Apple logo is so successful is because it portrays one of the brand qualities of knowledge. And if it didn't have a bite out of it, it wouldn't work. It's that uniqueness comes from what you're trying to communicate. And unique is, comes up quite often, as you can imagine, with benchmarks. But it actually needs serious consideration because most, say you use banks for an example, if you want to create a, a logo, create a complete unique thing for a bank, uh, they're quite keen to it, so they see it, and then, then they get cold feet. I mean, I a few years ago was actually did a whole concept where the bank became basically like a coffee shop, um, and uh, that scared hell out of them. And we had to go back to having a bank which looked like a bank. We did a job for an Icelandic bank who wanted to be visually unique uh, in this banking in the banking sector. And the benchmarks came down to being unique, Icelandic, modern, but were linked to a parent company, which is one of the largest banks in Iceland. So the mark comes from the land of fire and ice, and it comes from basically a fishbone. And it is quite unique. I mean, an art, art galleries on the whole only have lines of type, uh, but this art gallery wanted a symbol and they wanted it with a unique symbol to their location as the capital of Scotland in Edinburgh. They wanted it to get across modern art and it also wanted to be a friendly mark. So after a couple of weeks and not getting very far, in desperation I thought, well I wonder what the hell Edinburgh looks like. So I looked at a road map of the centre of Edinburgh. While I'm staring at this road map I realised it makes the shape of a dog. It makes the shape of a pig, but on the whole, pigs definitely not as friendly or as, as endearing to the United Kingdom as dogs are. So that became their symbol. The first year of their um, exhibitions, we took out the street names and we actually put in the names of the artists. We then got a brief for a law firm uh, who wanted to be received as above all human, that was at the end of the analysis, we want to be human, which is, if you've ever known a lot of law lawyers, it's quite a tough idea of being, getting to be perceived as human. Um, so with Clarks, we took, got them to agree to a lowercase c for their name and just put two eyes either side, thus giving it a human quality. And, and also we think we're the only company to actually get lawyers to smile when it was their anniversary, um, they actually did smile. Burton's Menswear is a chain of over 36 fashion retailers in the UK, and their benchmarks came down to basically being traditional English, but they wanted street cred, humour, and a degree of history because they've been going for quite a long time. So this is a British bulldog wearing sunglasses. And this became the symbol for their stores. This is just to tell you I will stop talking after a while. Cardiff City Council was a hung council, so it was 50% Conservative and 50% Labour, and they wanted a brand identity. So I, I imagined this was going to become like a political football. But we actually got them to agree on the number of qualities they wanted this brand to have, which was high quality. They wanted a dragon. So obviously a symbol for Welsh. They wanted to be Welsh, human, caring and sensitive, dynamic and responsive. Well, on the whole, dragons aren't really known for being caring and sensitive. Uh, they're known for being dynamic and quite responsive. So we drew the mark calligraphically, putting that human element from the benchmarks back into the quality. So these benchmarks give us the flexibility and give us the the driving force to come up with concepts or ways of doing things. We also made sure the dragon faced away from Wales, because uh, away from England, sorry, because they wanted to be Welsh. And the corporate colours are obviously the colours of their own flag, green and red. 
He won every comp livery competition for five years. AIT, um, they actually are IT specialists in very large accountants. And Miss Glute wanted to be seen as bright, lively, friendly, open and agile. So this is Hummingbird called Argus. And that answers those benchmarks. And this was at the launch of it. They came back after the first day, it was on wash bags. It's been, animate, it's been animated, the eyes go round, it moves up and down on the thing. It was a 10th anniversary, uh, so we actually added a naught to get the 10 off the beat. Graphic design is actually a process of understanding what someone else is trying to communicate. So you have to understand what the message is to be able to do it. So I'm basically pushing benchmarks because if you if you can answer a set of criteria, you're probably going to come up with something slightly more interesting than a line of type. And the other thing to remember is to remove the headphones, unplug the computers. It actually does take more interesting people who have an interest in life and live an interesting way to produce interesting work. Last year, it was 26 years of et al. So we worked out, uh, out of all the different identities we've done, we had enough for every letter of the alphabet with a different animal. So E for eagle, F for frog, G for goat. That's a hummingbird, just shows we can draw hummingbirds in different ways. Um, a ball for Costco, legal DNA, an owl, a pair of um, animals for Derby. So they just go through a few of them. You don't produce, to sell these sorts of ideas, you need to have some way of criteria of doing it. Ah, the end is coming, so don't worry. I just want to leave you with three things. Always be true unto yourself and always say please. And thank you.